Hi folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatorius. So I am at the Wallace Collection with Dr. Tobias Capwell, who's the curator of Arms and Armour here. And I asked on our Facebook page for some questions. Um, one question stood out amongst all the others. Uh, lots of good questions and thanks for contributing. Um, and that was, what item in the collection does Dr. Capwell think is deserving of more attention and is a standout item that you should appreciate more? Um, so tell us, what yes. is it? This is a, sorry, this is a good <laughs> question um, because I'm often the one responsible for calling attention to certain pieces and in the past I've been guilty of picking my favorites of the moment or continually banging on about you know, things that are my special favorites. But so if something is underappreciated, it's probably my fault. Uh, but but uh, since we asked the question, my answer today will be this saddle. Uh, this is a, an extraordinary thing, but like many extraordinary things at the Wallace, it's kind of hidden in a dark corner. Mm. Uh, there's lots of other fabulous things upstaging it in other parts of the case. There's no interpretation that really calls your attention to it. And it's also never been really the subject of any modern conservation work, um, you know, which matters in this case because uh, it, it has a lot of original textile on it. So essentially this is a mid 16th century war saddle. It's made for someone riding in full plate armor, but of a very rich kind. Made in about 1560 in Milan. Um, but the key point here is that when you often see what look like armored saddles in museum collections, they're not actually saddles. They are surviving armor plates that have been mounted on a vaguely saddle-like object as a mount in the, er, in the 19th or 20th centuries normally. So the armoured plate being this part at the front yeah, here. This... you usually have the front arson, as it's called, broken down into three plates that are bolted together, and then you have rear plates. And you know, the armored, decorated armored plates are often all that survives. A saddle mm. is made out of organic materials, predominantly mm. wood, leather, and textile. You just don't have very much of a, you know, a chance of that surviving. But in this case, what you are looking at is a completely pristine, untouched 16th century saddle with very, very rich silk skirts, embroidered. It was once sort of a fabulous, rich, green and gold and then the saddle plates themselves are really remarkable they're beautifully overlaid in silver and gold um, early early mannerist and classical ornament and they have these wonderful little little panels that give you these really uh, mysterious and seductive views of the ancient world, strange obelisks and Roman buildings, and you don't really, they're all different, and are these different ancient cities, <laughs> Carthage, Rome, or, 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 or are they just fantasies? It's a very beguiling object as well. It's amazingly detailed, isn't it? From a practical point of view as well, it's also a very important thing because, you know, a lot of people who come here or who watch um, this channel will be interested in, you know, the helmets or the swords or, the, you know, various bits of arms and armour. But the saddle, of course, as you well know, is an incredibly important piece of equipment, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, its importance is really often overlooked, even by people like me, like jousters, mm. who should know better. You know, mm. a lot of jousters, they will bankrupt themselves <laughs> buying armor and horses, yeah. and then just stick on any old saddle. <laughs> you know, that's like not bothering to put a pilot seat in your aircraft. Yeah, I mean, it's the main contact point between you and the thing and, which is getting you and to... It, it's all an integrated system, yeah. because it's got to fit the horse perfectly, and, it's, and then it's got to integrate, not just with the rider, but with the particular armor. Mm. You know, different armors are gonna fit in saddles in different ways. And so for, um, for viewers, what's, and, and for me as well, I don't know anything about saddles um, or horses, um, what is the main difference between a 16th century war saddle and a modern saddle that you'll find at the riding school? What, what's, what are the main differences? Well, I mean, they, they are many, mm. but essentially, uh, a war saddle like this gives you, as the rider, a lot more support. 
Okay. So the seat is much closer and tighter fitting around you. Okay. It has the high front and rear plates that really hold you in and give you a lot of protection. Mm. Uh, it also has the bolsters on the backs of your thighs that save you the trouble mm. of having to maintain your, your leg position. You can just ah. rest on those and not okay. worry about it and your legs just automatically are held in the right place. You know, and a good rider can keep his legs in the right place. Yeah. But a good armored saddle is about making the rider's job easier. Yeah. Because you've got to be fighting, you're getting hit. There's all sorts of other things you need to be worrying about. You can't be putting 100% of your effort into staying on your horse. And of course you have some sensory deprivation when you're in armor anyway to do with your contact points between you and the horse and, and your center like of balance is yeah. higher and it's easier to become imbalanced and harder to maintain balance yeah so anything that the saddle can do to help you with that is a, is an advantage and I think it's interesting you mentioned the protection afforded you've got plates at the back sort of covering your your um, behind and yeah. also your groin yeah and of course these are areas which are often exposed on armor when you sit on something up high mm -hmm. and of course if you're dealing with infantry who are stabbing pointy things up towards you very mm -hmm. very dangerous so these plates here are armor aren't yeah, they and absolutely. i think a lot of people don't think about that that you've got armor on there as well and and the plates of a saddle like this were usually decorated to match the rest of your armor you mm. know if you look at something like the almain album at the victoria and albert museum mm. which records the work of the royal armorers at greenwich when they design all the parts of a complete armor, the saddle plates are in there as well. Yeah. That's part of, it's part of the armor. Your armor as a knight is not complete if you've not got the saddle. Yeah. So there we go. Um, massively underappreciated um, object. Next time you come to the Wallace Collection, then check it out. It is A410, so A410. Dates to about 1560. Um, Amazing survival of war saddle because of all of the um, material wood and, and uh, fabric that survives on it, very unusually. And you can also check out the Wallace Collections online uh, catalogue as well. Um, I'm not 100% certain whether this one's on yeah, there, but on. it is on there. Yeah. So, uh, so if you just search for saddle in the online collection, you'll be able to see it there as well if you're not able to physically get here and check it out. Um, but thank you very much, Toby. Um, I didn't expect you to pick a saddle, but I should have guessed. <laughs> I should have guessed if I'd thought more about it. Thanks for watching. We've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers, folks.